because we have been encouraged to do the hybrid thing. So I'm trying, I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, not all of us can understand or get the things one time. So this is also to facilitate understanding. Okay, let's make a start. So welcome again to week number two. Anybody want to drop? this? You can drop, you know. Uh, second week, can. You can drop without even uh, have to pay anything. Yeah, you can drop. Although I, I wonder if you drop where you want to go. Right, so um, it's, it's, it's the sound, okay? All the way, the back, all right, okay. So, um, so for those who just um, came in, um, I, I was talking to your friends earlier, uh, asking them about your primary language to do lecture because you are faculty pendidikan, right? I was made to understand that Malay is your primary language as a medium. Yeah. I unfortunately I cannot I can do it in, in Malay, not a problem at all. But however, the purpose of education is not to end at the semester. It has to be a long life process, long life learning. So using English, not only that you are going to be exposed to the right terminologies, correct terminologies, it will make you more resourceful in the future. When you want to look for further information, not just for you, maybe for your own students. One day you'll have students on your own, right? Or, or no, you just want to, or I want to open business. No student, no student, right? It, 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 it makes me a, a bit timid because the guys dress very sharply. Something happened earlier today? No, no. Or is, it, is this the way that you, you, you dress up? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the farm guy. What do, you, what do you want? I'm the farm guy. Look at me. I went to the farm to look at the onions just now. Yeah, so um, reality, not so very reality. Okay, so... Um, for my part, half of the semester, these are the things that you are going to be learning, all right, with me. So we are pretty much covered that during the, uh, the first class. I mean, like, that should be a proper session for it about the introduction to the concept of botany. But let's put it this way. We learn the concept along the way because I want you to appreciate it for a long time, not only during the one session of the lecture. So we will we, we'll learn something, we'll do the reflection, we make appreciation, we make connection so that not only that you appreciate, you will make good connection and be um, very, very resourceful about it, okay? Not just for your assignment, but for any other thing as well. So today we're going to deal with this thing, um, identification, nomenclature, and classification. I hope you have received your notes. Everybody got notes? All good? All good? I will try to give it ahead of time, just in case you want to print it your way. I know it looks small. Maybe next time I'll turn it um, the landscape and then we can have bigger frame for, for each slide, right? Then we'll have a look at the root, stem and leaf. Yeah, actually this thing should be learned here this week because your um, practical this week involving root, okay? Not to worry, not to worry. Um, during your practical, we'll have a short briefing, about 5-10 minutes. Okay, do your observation first. And along the way, um, you will learn about the morphology of the roots. There are so many plant species that, 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 that you need to know about the roots <coughs> specifically. And then we also will learn about the flower, fruit seeds. These are all organs, okay, organs of the plant. Do you have organs? What organ do you have? Do you have stem? No. no? Then how do you stem? This, the, the front part, your torso, is actually your stem. Yeah. Your limbs. You know limbs? Um, what's limbs? Uh, I'm trying to think the, the right Malay word for it. Um, Sandy is joint. Limbs. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a collection for both arms and legs. We call it limbs. Okay? Yeah. 
So uh, you do not have leaf, <laughs> you do not have root, but to some degree you have different organs that somewhat have similar functions. Okay, flower, fruit, and seeds. These are reproductive organs. Do you have flower? Oh, he got it. Where's, where's your flower? <laughs> Do you have fruit and seed? Yes. How many fruit you have? Ah, cak, jawab ibu bukan aku tanya. Kenapa kenapa? Okay, alright, okay, and then we're going to. This is the final. But uh, this is actually how the fertilization takes place. Actually, I know you have learned. Have you learned your biology, your regular human biology? So the fertilization in human animal is it's kind of a bit different than plants. Okay, so this actually deals with that specific event. And you'll be surprised that there are actually many things that need to happen in order to create a seed, let alone to produce a fruit. Okay, many events. Okay, all right, go on. All right. The naming, the nomenclature in, in the plants. All right. So why 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 is it important to, to learn about the names? It's true, it's for communication, not just to make you feel good because people call your name correctly. It's actually for communication so that miscommunication is not happening. Plus, you are being certain and absolute about the thing that you talk about. Plants, when it involves in other industry, not only for agriculture, producing the harvest, you, you got the yield, you, you do the harvesting and so on. For the pharmaceutical industry, for the cosmetic industry, if you get the wrong plants in your formulation to produce your products, you were hoping to turn your customer beautiful and end up it looks like what? Not, not as much as you would hope. Yeah? to the point it can endanger life, all right? So that's why name is very important. So, but the names itself, I mean like, okay, then how we should use the name? The name that should be descriptive enough, the name that should be easy enough so that the purpose of having names for the communication purpose can be achieved. Look at this. So many fruits. Mm. Any fruits that you have not seen before? Kind of like, like longan, something? Uh, yeah. Um, this is actually, the English is, this, this is Indian word, I think. Um, gooseberry. 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 Bukan berry angsa, tak ada. <laughs> Gooseberry. Um, I think the, the Latin for this is Faisalis. Faisalis. Ataupun, I think Malay dia panggil buah, buah letup. Sebab dia boleh letup. Buah letup. Yeah. Then you got avocado, banana, karambola, chiku. Is that how you, you see? They, this is this is actually this is how many people uh, spell it outside Malaysia. Oh. Yeah, Chiku. <laughs> yeah, Grace Kova. So many variations, so many diversity, and guess what? You will see soon. So many way to refer to one particular plant. If all of us using our own language, it's going to cause haywire to the system. Okay, go on. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at one example here. So I know that this plant is not native to Malaysia, but I just want to make a, a point here. So this plant is called cedar. Not cider. Cider is uh, vinegar. Cedar. 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 Not cheddar, that's cheese. Cedar. So cedar, um, it's actually belonging to the group that we call as gymnosperm. So you will learn about two types, two groups of plant, gymnosperm and angiosperm. 
So it simply means this is flowering, non-flowering. As simple as that. Um, angio uh, means it's uh, it's, it's, it's got uh, like like the vessels, you know, uh, the piping system inside of it. And sperm is actually the seeds. Gymno sperm. This is seed as well. Gymno means um, naked. So naked seed, meaning that the seeds are actually not in enclosure or in any container. The cones of the pine. I know that you're not. Maybe many of you are not familiar with the pine. But the pines actually, the, the embryo kind of exposed to the environment. It's not like the embryo of papaya or apple inside the fruit. You have to cut up the fruit in order to get it. Okay, so enjoyo. So enjoyo, it means um, vessel or container. Right? Okay, so this plant, cedar, belongs to gymnosperm or enjoy sperm? Gymnosperm. All right, okay. Look at here, for this one type of cedar, cedar plant present in many countries, okay? Even in Malaysia, but, but that's not very native. This one is called the Eastern Red Cedar. Look at the family. Um, by the way, this is the taxonomic range that you learned last week. Do you still remember the mnemonic for that taxonomic range? All the way from kingdom to? Species. What, what was the formula? King David came over for great soup. Okay, good. All right. So, and this is the family for this uh, Eastern Cedar. How do you pronounce this? Can you say it? Cupressaci. Oh, no. Cupressaci. In Malaysia, people use American pronunciation for some reason. But in regular English, use the British pronunciation just for this. Okay? All right. Okay, so remember, Cupressaci. Let's look next. Another kind of cedar, the incense cedar. Not incest. That's the no no thing to do with your sibling. Incense cedar. This cedar, also Cupressaci, but. Actually, they're kind of different, even though they see the this one. Look at the name. In, you know, incense. Come here. Come here. Okay. Um, ke, I do not know. Ke, is it kemenyan? Kemenyan? Ke, ke, me, and so there is a few words that can use because really there's only one. In in English, it's more specific because they have they have other many other plants for this. One is incense. Um, another one is <laughs> how, how how do you pronounce this? <laughs> no, not mere. Mer. 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 Yeah, yeah. Incense and and mer. Okay. All right, so this is fragrant. I kind of know a bit this one because I worked with this plant before. Okay, okay, go on, go now. Western red cedar, still a cedar, still. Corpus Okay, okay, that's what interesting story about it. If you if you um if you notice that, even though they are all cedars, they have started to change in the name of the genus. Look, look the one before this. This one is, how do you pronounce this? Tuja. 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 You, you, you need to be, to know a bit of Spanish here. Tuja. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, in um, Sp Spanish student, when they want to laugh, they go. <laughs> how do you say no, bukan ja 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 ja. Too hard. Okay, go the, uh, before. Look at it's not the same. Calocidrus and the one before that. Juniperus. 
This one actually, juniperus, is one of the herbs and spices that can be used in cooking. Juniperus, juniperus berry. It's not, it's not common in Malaysia, but if you go to a supermarket, they, they have it sold on the shelf. Right? Okay, go on. Next. Let's see. What kind of the cedar? Okay. Spanish cedar. I, I, I should have put the bigger picture. This is the picture. Look at the name. Family now. Melase. Melase. Melase is the family of... Oh, you guys should know this. Um, from neighbor. Curry family uh, citrus, frutase. Citrus family called ruta C. It's the same as curry. Curry, you know, curry, curry plant. Yep. The same family. If you look at the flower, it's the same as the orange flower. White, a bit fragrant. Yep. Mel, let's say. It's, 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 it's. Odorata means it produces odor. It, it smells. You can get smell out of this. Odorata. Odor. Odor. Alright. Okay. Go on. And then another one. Also, also a cedar. But look at the family. Pinacy. Pinacy. Whatever you want. However you pronounce it. And actually, this is the Le Lebanon national tree. Okay. I did, I did, I did go to, 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 to Beirut, Lebanon before. I was looking for this tree, but in order to get this tree, you need to go to higher elevation. Yeah. It's an ancient tree. Okay. So kind of sacred to the tribal people there. Yeah. So, um, look at the name. Libani. It's specific, special for the Lebanese people. Do you know any Lebanese people? <laughs> Lebanon. All right. I went I went I went here a long time ago. I think like when was it? Yeah, about yeah, ten exactly ten years ago. Um Lebanon is um the one of the fugitive sites for the Palestinian people. So they have the border connecting to the P Palestine. All right. So if you if we want to send help or aid, medical food and so on, we go through Lebanon, the Beirut. Okay? Go on. So, only one cedar, look how many families that you have to deal with. Three. Three. But they are all in your vernacular words, in your common words, they are all cedar. Cedar, 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 cedar. But actually, botanically, they are different. Cupressaceae, Meliaceae, and Pinaceae. They are different. Okay? So, go on. Just to add salt to the wound. It's not only happening for the scientific community. Even, even for the words, simple word like fruit. Look at the fruit. fruit. Who's the weird one now? <laughs> yeah. Sabah, don't condemn Malaysia just yet. <laughs> uh, look at this, look at this. Uh, maybe you cannot see it. Um, me, me fun. Blah. Um, aku tak nampak. Kau dah nota kan? Kau tak nampak lah. Do Do you have to take other language for your course? Arab. Ah, uh, rose. Rose. Yeah. Um. Ya, yeah, muka happy 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 je kan. Macam kenapa? They are all referring to rice. No, the point is, let's look at Malaysia and Indonesia because we are familiar with this language, right? We have padi, beras, nasi. Does English have different word for this? Yeah. Yeah, the paddy that English is using is actually borrowing from us. This is not a new word. The rice that English is using 
from the Arabic word arouse. Okay, rauf, rauf. Can you read this? Can you read this? What what letter is this? Your 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 in, your Indian friend. Um, uh, <laughs> what are these people doing? <laughs> yeah. This this is why sometimes it's, it's fun to learn botany because you get to see other languages what people are talking about, right? Okay. Yeah. And who's the weird one here? For the rice. Cloud, 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 cloud. <laughs> it, it kind of makes you wonder because rice is a is a culture in the Thai people. Shouldn't they be having more specific word to tell different rice stage? I mean, like rice on the plant, rice that just get harvested, and that rice that has been cooked. So. This is the culture. This is the, the, the beauty, the colorful side of the humans. The way we think is different. So, later, when you have chance to go international, mix up with, with other students or other friends for that matter, don't easily get spooked. Spooked. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of like Melata. Don't, don't easily to judge people. I mean, like, you have not seen it all. Okay? Chill. Relax. You have, have, you have not seen it all. All right, okay. And then we got the sunflower. Even within the same language, you have specific way to call one plant. For example, this sunflower here. We got the giant sunflower. Um, uh, this is the base, the basic anus. Anus means annual. No, okay. The earth walker. This is actually all the varieties, lander, maximilian, and so on. All right, okay. So now, now you know. If you use only the common name, you cannot be certain. Confusion will happen. Miscommunication will occur. And you might cause people to fight with each other because everybody say that I'm right. Mm. Right. Okay. Go on. So for this reason, scientific nomenclature was proposed by scientists in the past. This thing, oops, this thing happened. Um, hundreds of years ago okay so when 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 it started even the scientists kind of like us as well they they kind of look at the obvious first how to classify the plants like when we look at all the organisms on the planet we we see oh some are living some are non living then we make a crude classification out of it and that's fine but when it comes to plants plants are so diverse like it can be as small as your fingernail and then it can be as big as that new tower in KL that is like holding um Chris. What yeah. was that then? I forgot that. We we saw that tower so many times. No, not T-Rex, the other one. Ah yeah, Madeka something. Madeka 118. It can be even bigger than that. Do you, do, do, do you know any an animals, like, for example, fish, like one group, that small to, to, to that big, and then can, can be on any part of the planet? So you can argue, okay, okay, I got anchovy, you can believe, and then I got whales. Yeah, but anchovy and whales, can you, can you find it in just about any ocean? Right, but plants, you can find it, like, Everywhere in the mountain, do you find whales in the mountain? Oh. Some of the whales, whales that I've, I've, I've just have bought. Let's climb up uh, Kinabalu <laughs> and enjoy sun, sunrise. That's not happening. Okay, so go on. All right. Okay. So, um, number one, in order to do this scientific classification, no, no, sorry, in order to do this nomenclature, you need to be able to classify the organism first. That is the first method. That's why you are introduced to these taxonomic ranks. Okay? Even in this class, can you divide yourself among a category? For example, gender. Can you divide yourself? Yes. What category can be under gender? Female and male. Female and male. 
No, no nothing in between. <laughs> you know what? In in Malaysia, um, the, the the subject of in between is not very acceptable. If you go to other country, even the close the Thailand, it's fine. It's fine. I went I went to the campus there in Bangkok. Um, the, there, there's no discrimination. Of course, people tease that 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 person a lot, but they do normal things like other students do. Okay, it's just a different of different values. Okay, and again, don't easily get spooked. All right. Okay, so we have domain. Um, usually we got three domains, and then we got kingdom. Usually, you'll see there are many kingdoms under there and all the way, all the way to species, okay? So, this is the full name for Zemes. Zemes, what plant is this? Okay, so the, the, the full lineage, family lineage for Zemes is Mace, Mace, Z, Poise, Cyperalis, Leliopsida, Menelophyta, Plante, Eukarya. Meaning that, Maize, corn, be, the species that we plant is maize because we, we utilize the kernels for, for cereal. Z, because um, corn has a special coloring in it called zizantin. That's why it's yellow. Zizantin. Zizantin. Okay, and it belongs to the family of Poaceae, the grass family. Okay, and the order of Cyperalis. Okay, and since it is under the Liliopsida, meaning that it is a monocot plant, monocotyledon, meaning that the seed of the um, maize only have one baby leaf, one cotyledon. Cotyledon means baby leaf. Baby leaf inside the seed. When you um, cut the uh, seed into two, you'll see the, the, the baby leaf, the cotyledon inside. Okay? And then it's a magnoliophyta, flowering plant. Guess what? This is the synonym for... And this sperm. It's the same thing. It means the same. Magnoliophyta means flowering plants. And gyrosperm also means flowering plants okay and then you deal with the division the kingdom plantae and then domain so this is the full lineage of azimuth and this is only one plant so many so ask yourself can you id your human lineage now what where do you belong uh, you stop up to where <laughs> how well do you know yourself do you know the, the Latin name for, for human? Uh, homo sapien. So homo here, sapien here, and after that, the family of what? <laughs> do not know. So, yeah. So you, you just know this kingdom, Animalia. Family, the, the primate family, the apes family. Okay? All right. But of course, we are more advanced um, uh, than the apes. Okay, but the point is, even though we are of different type of organism, human also follow this same classification. It's the same. Insects, you know, you like you like you like you like your nyamuk so much. No, no nobody like nyamuk. <laughs> even that mosquito also follow this. All right. Okay, so let's uh, review first. How this come about? How how scient scientists do the classification? One. Okay, so um, under the taxonomic rank domain, domain we have two. Uh, we have the eukarya and we have the archaea. And this other one, uh, kind of like a bacterial thing. So the domain, usually we don't talk about it. We, we regard all of us is eukaryotic. Sorry. Our domain, you plant, animal, eukaryote. You ka car yot karyotic eukaryotic meaning that you have your cell, your cell have a nucleus. So all your genetic materials in this nucleus. 
bacteria and so on, they do not have this specific nucleus. They, they have the genetic material kind of floating about in the cells. It's not contained in a container. Okay? All right. So under the kingdom, you can see there are five kingdoms here. Prokaryote, eukaryote, um, unicellular, multicellular, autotroph, and heterotroph. Okay. Go down a bit. All right. Okay. So these are the crude way to look at it. The scientists in the past. Remember, okay, this thing happened continuously throughout the time. It doesn't happen in like one year. Then suddenly they say, okay, this is what we no no no. It happens since like um beef beef before beef beef before the, the beginning of the Gregorian calendar. Oh, do you know Gregorian calendar? The calendar that you're having now. What 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 what, what the date today? Seven, oh, sorry, 17. What happened to the first 16? That calendar that you are referring all every day, that is called Gregorian calendar. Gregorian calendar. Uh, if 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 you are worrying about Hari Raya and everything, you are referring to what calendar? Hijri calendar. Yeah, and each culture, even even the Japanese people, they have their own calendar. That's why you, if you read in Japanese, they were called the Edo period. So they have this period thing. So this is actually their calendar. The Japanese, um, the Thailand people, they have the Bud Buddhist calendar. So each nation has their own calendar. We happen to follow the Gregorian calendar. Okay. So this has happened before, what year is this? Meaning that this has been 2022 years. It happens before this. This is all the way at zero, right? Yeah, it's happened. There is no negative. <laughs> There's no negative. It's it becoming like this way, 2022 as well. So this is the birth of the, they said, baby Jesus. Jesus' birthday. <laughs> so in here, this is the, the, the birth of the Jesus. And here it's called AD. Whatever before this is called BC. Before? Suka tingkau je before century. Before Christ. Hush. Siapa je kau before century? Siapa mati je? AD Tak ada after And no domini Ay. Sebelum masihi Selepas masihi Ni sebelum masihi Ni selepas masihi uh, uh, See, at least you learn something today uh, Dah nak merepek Sebab tu, kena belajar bah, lebih sikit bahasa tu. <laughs> Alright? Okay. So, so this classification thing have been happening since this period. This period. Okay? BC, BC time. Sebelum Masihi time. Until now. Okay, go on. To the point, this guy here, Robert Whittaker, he was, uh, I think, bila dia mati, semalam 20 ke? Mana ada tak tulis? Ah, ni. Eh, born 1920. What, what does it say? I cannot see properly here. 1980. Uh, born 1920. Okay. So, this guy proposed a system to classify all the organisms on this planet, excluding hantu. Because some scientists, they include the hantu as well. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be so surprised. Some some scientists the the job is proving supernatural activity. Yes. And guess what? These are some of the best scientists in the world. They are in the field of physics. They study matter and energy. Okay? So I do not know what kind of classification they're using. Maybe uh, uh, what well, ugly beautiful hantu and so on, but um there are people doing that. Okay, so Mr. Whitaker 
he proposed this five kingdom classification. Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. Okay, Monera is uh, unicellular, autotroph, uh, very small cell, like the bacteria. And then you have the amoeba. Amoeba, it's not amoeba. Amoeba, eukaryotic, this is also autotroph. However, you see, eukaryotic, meaning that it has got nucleus. EU, EU means through, through. Prokaryotic, no nucleus. And then you got the kingdom of the mushroom kingdom, fungi. And then we have the plantae kingdom, what, what we are learning today, and also the animalia. So where, which kingdom are you in? Animalia. Animalia. Sure, not Monera? Sure. <clears throat> how, how, how many cells do you have in your body? <laughs> you ha I just want to give you perspective, okay, so that you, um, you don't think linearly, okay? There's so much to life than what you are being presented to your plate. You have about 60 trillion of cells. How, 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 how many is trillion? You know one million? Yes. One million. So, one thousand one million is one billion. Okay. Yeah. So, one thousand one billion. One thousand times one billion is one trillion. So that's a lot. Just to give you another perspective. One, one second. Is it long? 16. One second, one second. Six, 60 seconds. One minute. Um, one hour. Second. Second. One billion second huh? <laughs> I think it's about 32 years can you see that 60 seconds only one minute I just want to show you the the intensity of billion okay when you talk about one billion if you turn it in the form of second it will take you 32 years to get 1 billion seconds. Okay? That's how much that money is when somebody lost it. <laughs> right. Okay? All right? Yeah. So, um, where was I? Nak cakap bukan lagi. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. 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 The kingdom. All right. So, um, Robert Whitaker, he proposed this and... Um, pretty much accepted by the scientific community because this is kind of very comprehensive, okay? Our country use it, the, the West people use it. Of course, there are scientists kind of stubborn about it. So if you go to study further about taxonomy, not only plant taxonomy, taxonomy in general. So you have the work, work title as taxonomist. I'm a life taxonomist. You will see that sometimes there are six kingdoms, three kingdoms, six kingdoms, eight kingdoms. There are many schools of thoughts, mazhab. Okay, right? So, who's right? Depends on the context. Okay, there is no one which is right, but there is a fundamental to it. Fundamental that everybody's agreeing. Okay, it's pretty much like, um, you know, when you are Muslim, um, uh, when talking about the faith, Akidah, regardless of your mazhab or school of thoughts, there is no argument about it. There is only one God, there's that much of prophets, uh, that, that, that many of uh, angels, and so on. Regardless of your school of thoughts, nobody argues with it. Right. But when it comes to um, uh, worshipping um, Ibadah and so on, you will see that Different people have different opinions. Some people say, oh, it's okay. I, I don't have to pray using the socks. Some people say, oh, you have to use it. Some people say, oh, I, there is 
so much room of flexibility. Okay, so that's that's why. But the fundamental is the same. The faith is that. So pretty much like the classification system. The fundamental globally accepted from before until now. And then the discrepancies here and there for the arguable matters. All right. Okay. Go on. Yeah. So, and then this guy actually was before the Whitaker. This is even longer. This grandpa, uh, he was a Swedish. He was a Swedish. Uh, you know, all the scientific names that you learned up to now came from him. Yeah. Uh, go up. He used this binomial nomenclature, Carl Linnaeus. Okay. The full name is Carolus Linnaeus, the, the father of modern text, uh, taxonomy. Okay. So, with the uh, binomial nomenclature, you only use two taxonomic ranks genus and species forming the scientific name what are synonyms for the scientific names latin, latin names botanical names okay for the plants don't call a uh, tiger got botanical name no no tiger just got its uh, scientific name so for this example pantera tigris what fruit is this mangifera indica Look at this. Each of these, we call it specific epithet. A, P, fat. You got your genus name and species name, right? So each of these, we call it specific epithet. This epithet, indica, it already shows that this plant is the provenance. Remember you learned about the provenance last week? So later on, when you are dealing with fruit, when you want to put the provenance, this is easy. It's already there. India, India. Whoever put Korea, <laughs> Mangifera. Um, it's also also a specific epithet, but Mangifera is actually um to show the the old name for for mango. It's actually from the Sanskrit word. Sanskrit. Um. If I want to. The, the, the old Sanskrit words for it. Mam Baram. I do not know. Ask the Sanskrit people. This is like a long time ago. <laughs> Something like that. I think India, you call it what? Same right? Yeah, ask your English friend. This, they call it Mam Plum. Mam Pram. Mam. Oh, how, how do you call it in, in Tamil? Sorry? Mam Ask. Uh, see, she knows Sanskrit. Uh, she's not telling you. <laughs> Mam Param. We we have to thank your your Indian friends because you are borrowing many words from 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 their culture. Chapati, 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 chapati. Oh, okay. I I I got a question. Um, is it? Uh, because because in in the um, ERT lesson they call it Tairu. Tairu, ta uh, is it in in they call it Tairu or is it pronounced differently? Same Tairu, Tairu, Tairu. Yogurt, yogurt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> tairu. <coughs> Tairu. Tairu. Um, sour, sour yogurt. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Go on. Now we focus about the kingdom plantae. All right, okay. So for the kingdom uh, plantae, um, under this kingdom, there are further division, but you don't have to worry everything about this. I just want to sh show you that for this lesson, we are going to see representative example from the division under kingdom plantae. But bear in mind, in between division, this level, and kingdom, there is always a sub-kingdom, but we're not dealing with that. All right? So, the division in the plantae kingdom. You see, there are many ways people use to classify plants. Look at this. 
these are very rigid scientists because they have special classification only for land plant. Land plant is called this embryophytes. Because there are plants that are not in, on, on the land. There are plants, um, and, you know, aquatic plants, okay? But we just want to look at the, this thing. Um, oh, it's not here. But basically this division here. How many divisions are there? That's a very good question. It can be between 10 and 14, depending on which school you are going. Okay, go on. Division, okay? Yeah, so these are the division that we are going to go through. Just to look at some examples so that you know that plants are very diverse. It's very colorful out there, okay? So um, the way I arrange this is, according to evolution evidence, okay? The very native, long, long time ago, if you found it in the present day, it's pretty much has not evolved so much, meaning that if today you found it that way, meaning that 300 million years ago, it looked that way as well. Yeah. So, and then all the way, as it goes down to old number 10, meaning that it has undergone complex evolution. Okay, do you not understand evolution? Okay, right. Um, imagine you got Pokemon. Could, could nobody play Pokemon now. Um, let's take one Pokemon that that I like. Ah, Charmander. Charmander, Charmander kecil kan? A small fire. Yeah. And then Charmander go to argue with a lot of, of Pokemon. It got uh, bigger, stronger, more stubborn. Now it, it is stubborn. Kau tengok tak cerita tu? <laughs> kan? Kau nak compare dia dengan bubble saw, dengan squirtle? Kan lagi baik lagi dua ekor tu. This one is very stubborn. And then Charmander evolved to become? Tak tahu. Oh, people don't. They don't, they don't, they don't enjoy Pokemon. <laughs> uh, tak boleh cerita lah. Uh, cerita tu menarik. <laughs> Okay, all right, so we'll go through this. Um, bear in one my one thing, okay? This number 10, this guy, 80% of the whatever that you have now, or two thirds of the flowering species that are doing on, on the whatever that you see regularly, okay? So other groups here are very minority, okay? But they are still make our planets very, very interesting. Okay, go on. Number one, Mercantiophyta. So, um, this is actually, whatever that I give now, this is the latest, okay? When, when I was your age or younger, the, this name was not around, okay? This is the latest name to it. The, the field of taxonomy and systematics, systematic mean they will study evolution in addition to regular taxonomy, is actively changing, okay? It's not static, it's, it's dynamic. So, now they name it this division. Um, previously, it was known as hepatophyta. Now it's known as mercantiophyta. I mentioned this because just in case if you go to the Google Wikipedia, some Wikipedia page has not been updated. Okay, hepatophyta, hepa, not hepa that you go if you if you are in trouble. Hepa means liver. Liver, liver, okay? So that's why the name of this plant is liverwort. Do you have this in Malaysia? No, it's very small. And this is the plant, okay? When it says non-vascular, okay, vascular in plant, vascular means vein. Do you have vein? Yes. You have vein, you have artery, you have blood capillary, blood vessels, and so on. Yeah. These plants do not have it. Do not have it. So you see? Non-vascular. So how does it move the water and nutrients around? Just by a simple diffusion. Because it is small. It is small. So all the nutrient, water, oxygen, and so on can move about using simple diffusion. It's very, it's very a simple organism. 
the plants that you grow outside, you see surrounding you, they have vascular system. They have the veins, they have the xylem, the phloem. Okay, this guy, no xylem, no phloem. So xylem plus phloem, collectively we call it vascular bundle. Xylem to conduct water. Phloem to conduct sugar. These two bring together, you call it vascular system. Think of piping system. Yeah, you have lots of fluids. You need to move the fluid about and out and about. You need the piping system, okay? So, and this is the, uh, the picture of it, okay? So, uh, along the way, learn your word. Carlos, I'm sorry if you can't see it. Next time, I'll, I'll make it. Uh, because this thing follow my computer. My computer is always in dark mode. So, whenever I kind of copy it, it follows that. So, phallus is actually the this part here. The, look at this. It looks like a liver. Have you seen liver before? <laughs> liver, hati. Bukan hati the, the jantung tu. No, liver, liver. Okay. So this looks like a liver flat on the ground. That's why it's called liver. Liver word. Okay. So thallus is undifferentiated uh, structure. You can't call it stem. You cannot call it leaf. It's kind of serving the purpose of both. Kind of in between. When you have that, that structure, you, you call it thallus. You see it in the label. Is there any label for stem and leaf? No. So there is thallus. Very primitive plant. Okay. 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 Go on. The second um, uh, division is anthocerotophyta. Hornwoods. So it gets its words from this thing. Horn words. Why? Look at the structure here. The structure that, pro that, that bears the spores, it looks like a horn. That's why um, it's the name of the popular plant in this division. It's called the hornworts. Okay? Horn-shaped sporophyte. Well, okay. Vascular system, you have understood that. Sporophyte. <clears throat> no. Uh, yes, uh, but no. <laughs> I'm <trying to> <laughs> um, in, in, in small organism, like uh, the, the first three or four divisions that going to see now, they have special thing that we call as, I think I need to wrap this. <sighs> Alter, alternative life cycle okay depending on the the timing of the the organism sometimes the organism is um, haploid haploid means the content of the gene is half and only okay sometimes the content of the gene is 2n okay so when it's 2n we know that this is vegetative vegetative it's growing a lot okay but the moment it enters the end we know that this is reproductive reproductive phase so you got two phase vegetative phase and also reproductive phase for this kind of uh, plant when it is in vegetative form you don't see the horns just see the green bits only. Yeah. Read something like that. No horns. But the moment it enters the reproductive stage, the horn will come out. And that stage is called the sporophyte stage. This. And. Okay. So the, the concept is not common to us because with, whether you are vegetative or reproductive, you look the same. But for, for this kind of plant, it looks different, okay? Depending on what stage is it, which is good because we know, oh, you are ready to reproduce, right? Okay. And then the, th the third one is the, you should be familiar with this, mosses. Not prophet mosses, mosses lumot. You know lumot? Yeah, you get it, you get it by the drain. So yeah, this, this, this is the, 
So now you know, the next time you go to uh, the drain, uh, what's drain? Longkang, you see all the uh, green things that are very slippery, make, make you fall down on the floor, and then you, your friend laugh at you. It belongs to the third division, Bryophyta, the moss division. Okay? And look at the moss. Most of the time, it is just green like this. The moment it's ready to reproduce, something coming up. Something coming up. Okay? So, yeah. Um, primitive plant. Don't have true leaves, stem, or roots. Pretty much like the first two divisions that you saw. What the first two division? The first division is? Marcatophyta. The old name? Hepatophyta. The second division? Entercerotophyta. The structure is the shape of? Horn. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is the Moses. But the good thing is, you can have agricultural, horticultural product. Sphagnum moss. Have you seen this before? You know, if you are orchid enthusiast, if you like to grow plants inside, you will see this a lot. You you get the mess of the moss, not you, the, the, the supplier, of course. They get the mess of the moss, they dry it, and this can be turned into growing medium for your plants. Hold water very well and inert. In it means that it's not very reactive, so it doesn't have a good capacity to make fungus attack it, right? So this is a good uh, agricultural product that coming up from this division, Brio Phyta, the most. Okay, go on. All right, okay. And number four, Filico Phyta. Okay, bear in mind as well. This is a new name. The old name for so very long, long, long time, since I could remember, is Terido Phyta. I have a feeling Wikipedia has not updated this. I do not know. You can check that. I have a feeling Wikipedia has not updated this. Filicophyta. Okay. This is the fern division. You know fern? Yes. Do we, do we eat fern? No. no? It tastes so good. Why not eat it? <laughs> Anybody never eaten fern before? Pucuk pakung kau tu fern lah. Um, you know Paku Midin? Oh. Uh, that's Filicophyta. <laughs> Filicophyta, yeah. Do you see any flowers on fern? No. no, it hasn't got any flowers, but now it has started to have vascular. Yeah. You see, the plant has evolved now. This fourth division, the first three division, no vascular system. Ini no xylem, no phloem. Very primitive, very ancient. The fourth division, now, no flower yet, no flower, but has got the vascular system. Okay? Yeah? So, you very. this is the, the, the shape of it. And, but it's still the same. Look at this. When it is um, in certain stage, it will look small, like this. On the ground when it's ready to produce the spores that's when you get this thing that you call leaf because it's ready now on this leaf or we call it the uh the front at the back you have the masses of spores okay can you eat spores can you eat spores of course you do you, you, you. whoever eats um, fungus, you eat, you are eating the spores. Okay, whether you like it or not. Okay, go on. Okay, the fifth uh, division. Spinophyta, horsetail. Um, I forgot the old name for this. This is the, the new name. I'm sure there is an old, old name, but, but, but I forgot this name. The only thing that I remember about this plant is um, it has been around and in fact, it's part of the landscape for the T-Rex. You know dinosaur? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the small fine like this. Yeah. So, um, this is called horse tails. Okay. Yeah. Remember, okay, up to this division, 
there are many plants in each division but the plants that i put on the slide is the the popular one we take representative okay mercanto paita we take the what liver word and then enterocerophyta we take the horn word for the bryophyta we take mosses ah uh, for the filicophyta we take fern the regular fern and for the fifth one we take the horse tail Okay, sphenophyta. Um, it has got the vascular system because it has evolved. Plus, this thing has pharmaceutical importance. Look at that. People turn it into a supplement. I think I think the girls will like this. Um, this plant is uh we call it as um hyper. Accumulator, <laughs> meaning that in the ground there are many minerals, right? There are many elements, carbon, nitrogen, gold, and so on. This plant has the ability to accumulate in its body silica. You know silica? Yeah, silica, the sand, the quartz, silica, lah Okay, so because of this, whenever you you eat this plant, you are actually getting the silica. And guess what? Silica is 60% of the collagen. The more silica you have in your body, well, let, let's hope the prettier you're going to get. Of course, it comes with your attitude. If, if you if you acting weirdly, no matter how beautiful the physical, people slap you right away. Yeah. Right. Oh. Right. Okay? Yeah. So, um, beauty supplement. I'm not saying that you need to buy this. No. No, I'm just, I'm just saying that um, some people on certain part of the world utilizing this plant. Okay? Um, silica is not only for beauty, actually. It's actually to... To treat arthritis when you are older, you have joint um, mobility issues, okay? Uh, gout, arthritis, and so on. So this silica actually help you with your mobility, okay? What's the point of being uh, beautiful when you cannot move? Yeah. yeah. You, you cannot show your beauty to the world. Right, right. You need to be beautiful and moving. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, it's like uh, okay. Remember the division? Sphenophyta. Alright, okay, go on. Okay, the sixth um division. Psychodophyta. Okay, this is actually the T-Rex T-Rex plant that you always see. Uh that looks like a palm at the back of the T-Rex in the movie. Yeah. This 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 is the division. It looks like a palm, but it's not. It exactly looks like a palm. People use this as ornamental plant. Yeah. It's called the cycad. Cycus. Okay. Look at this. It got fronts. Look like a palm, but it's not. Okay. It hasn't got any flowers yet. Palm. The coconut. Uh, oil palm. Uh, sago. What else? Palm. Um, areca nut. You know areca nut? Uh, no, that's too scientific. Um, beetle nut. Tak tahu juga. Pinang. Aish. Pinang. Beetle nut. Beetle nut. If I call, if I say beetle leaf, what is it? Siri. Ah. Do you know some people eat uh, this uh, bit leaf and, and also this uh, nuts? Yeah. It's a, 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 apparently it's like a, a stimulant. Some people do not like coffee. So they use this as a stimulant. Okay. So this is the palm like plant, cycad. And people use this a lot as the ornamental. Super, super expensive. If you sell this, no kidding, millionaire. But it's, it's not easy to grow this. All right. Okay, right. So, uh, uh, one more thing. Um, there is a nickname for this plant as well, the cycad. 
Um, go on, go on. Yeah. Ada ini, Oh, tak apa, tak apa. Oh, thank you. No, it's good. I need, I need to, 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 to clean up. <clears throat> Take five, okay? You can, can go to the toilet if you want. <clears throat> Let me see on this. Let me see on this. It's strong enough. Do you, do you see me memorizing anything? Let's look. We'll finish this in uh, one Uh, maybe one you could. You want it? Yeah, because I can squeeze whatever that's in the middle. Amali. Amali can look at the picture so they have like free time. Yeah, I'm not gonna read this. Damn it. Tuh gue tadi ke abis. Tidak usah pernah drop pun. Banyak agak macam apa? Because the name tak adalah SMP. My Petra Bas? Again stupid. Okay. They send my Petra Bas to Asasi punya site. Tak tahu. I don't have Asasi class. Kenapa saya send dia? Okay. Let's get in. Tak ada siapa kau nak ganti aku? Okay, korang dah belajar ke? Belajar lah kan? Kenapa tak belajar komik botani tak? Dia lah. Okay. Um, what was I? Oh, the nickname for psychic plant, living fossils. Living fossil. This thing is it? Is it that? Why is it not? No, this thing. Is it functioning? No. What? Where's that thing? Is it that? Kenapa? Itu far tadi. Kita tekan. Kita betul ni habis. Kita ada ada lagi. Kita tak betul ni. Kita betul ni. Kenapa kita charge? Ada betul ni. Oh. Susah sih lepas. I'm sorry, bateri habis. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
I'll try to stay in the middle. So this thing, uh, it has got a nickname called Living Fossil. The reason is, look at that rock. That rock from 300 million years ago. Yeah, they found the fossils in the rock. And guess what? They found the actual plants in the garden. So meaning that this plant has been living persistently despite of what happened to the dinosaur all become extinct. I don't extinct. I stay to live and you get to see me how I look 300 million years ago. <laughs> so yeah, there are a number of plants, um, ancient plant like this that we call as living fossils. Okay. All right. Okay. Go on. The seventh one, Jinko Faita. Okay, actually, um, among all these things, this is like uh, my f five, one of my five favorite plants, Jinko. <coughs> Bukan. It looks like pegaga, but it is not pegaga. Although the function is similar, kind of similar if you eat it. Okay, so Jinko Faita, there is a sad story about this plant about this division because for this division this is the only species it's not like i want to take a representative no this is the only plant jinko biloba this this plant here jinko biloba below because it has got two loops on on the uh, on the leaf okay so jinko biloba it is also regarded as a living fossils. It has been around since ancient time as well. You see, this plant, it is so ancient, the cells inside the body, even the atomic bomb cannot destroy it. So, you know the, the, the bombing of Hiroshima in Nagasaki in the 40s? That happened, right, during the World War. So, when that happened, completely the city of Hiroshima and Nagasaki got obliterated. You know that big uh, mushroom atomic bomb smoke? Yeah. Guess what? Everybody got obliterated. A few plants still standing. Green and living. Jinko. Jinko. And they, they kept this plant until now. This is the present look, how they look. But this was the, the plant in the 40s i got to work with this plant before as well and the plant this the jinko that i was working with about 300 years old it has got a very long life it's very 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 long life okay so so scientists are actually studying this plant to understand why is it so resistant to the radioactive there must be a reason it it is so so resistant to the point the whole city dead but you okay even the fish in the sea in the ponds all died it's completely empty ghost town when that happened it became a ghost town those humans those local people that got survived died afterwards because of the radiation they become mutated all the skin fell off yeah but nothing happened to this plant yeah so it's just so strong, yeah. And I, I can say you tell you one thing. If you if you get the chance to to go close to this tree, you will have a different feeling when you are. Well, I had my lunch under, under this tree a lot. It's just a different feeling. This this tree, I I keep telling myself. I think this tree is attracting wind and breeze. Why why other plants are not moving but you? <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 got, it's got this characteristic to make you feel calmer when you are under it. Yeah. This, no, no. The closest, the closest you have is Japan. <laughs> so, um, in the summer, it looks uh, green. But as the autumn comes, the, the green will turn to yellow. So, it looks completely golden, the whole tree. It's very, very beautiful. <laughs> okay, but guess what? For ph pharmaceutical purpose, uh, this is to tell you about the Pegagu story because you know Supergagu so much, right? 
<coughs> okay. Um, you can, oh, please do not eat this right away. Um, the leaf of the jinko has to be purified first before you get all these good properties. Okay. Uh, because our human body cannot deal with certain chemicals from the plants. That's why you use the uh, pharmaceutical company, extract the active compound and turn it into capsule like this. For what? It, it facilitates blood circulation to the point when scientists do the testing for this, it improves memory and also IQ. Yeah. So... Many, many people, when they are older and they have dementia, you know dementia? Yeah. Um, yeah, senility. Nyanyok, bukan nyanyok reput, nyanyok tak ingat. <laughs> nyanyok tak ingat. Dia tak reput lagi. It's, um, it's demented. It's demented, meaning that you, you, you experience Alzheimer, you forget think things, you, you say one thing and then you do other things, you know. Hmm, pretty much like what you're doing right now, right? So, there are studies that uh, gi give this to the elderly people, actually improve the Alzheimer, the dementia condition. Yeah, and when given to the age like you, that actually improve your memory retention. All right. So, is this a bogus thing? No, this is scientifically proven, Okay. But what if you are not into academic? Will it help you? Yes. Remember, this thing promotes good blood circulation. If you are athletes, it will increase your endurance. You can run longer, faster, and you just do not want to stop. <laughs> you can keep, keep, on, keep, on, keep on running until you hit the wall. All right, okay, so so this is why I, I like this plant, okay, it has got, um, but fair warning, I heard that if you eat this for the first time, you will uh, feel uh, pulsating, it's not headache, your, your, your head will start to pulsating a lot, pulsating, wait, what's my marker? Oh. Pulsating, you know, if you have the pulse, Bloop, 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 bloop. Uh, yes, positive. Uh, burden yot, burden yot, burden yot. Ah. Huh. Not bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah. Fair warning. Um, it is safe to take, but um, you will feel a bit tightening of your head because it's, it's sending lots of blood vessels to your brain. Now, your brain has been like pretty much dead all this while, right? <laughs> so, it's waking it up with more blood vessels. Yeah. So, can you... I, I, I'm not suggesting, but you can talk to your doctor if you want to try this, okay? All right, go on. Yeah, number eight, Pinophyta. This is the pine. Okay, please. Okay, one of the plants in the division is also my favorite. You see, I like ancient plants for some reason. Don't know why. I think, they, I, think just, I just think they are cool. They have so many superpowers that present plants do not have. Okay, so... Pinophyta, the, look at this. The, bi the biggest and the tallest organism on this planet belong to this division. Don't say whale. No, there is something bigger than whales, which is the <laughs> giant sequoia, these two. So the redwood, the pine, the redwood pine is the tallest natural structure in the world, the tallest tree. It's about 120 meters. That's very tall. And the biggest, the largest, meaning that we're talking about the volume, is also from the Pinato Kingdom, which is the uh, sequoia. Sequoia semperverens. It's so big. It's so big. Look at this. And that's your home. Um, this... This tree, this giant sequoia is so big, um, in the United States, in the national forest, people actually bore a tunnel so that a vent can go through. Ooh. Yeah, they don't cut this tree down when it's getting in the way. They just create a tunnel because it's just so big. It's like, it's just so big. I remember we, it, it, it was like five or six of us to, to hug the tree. 
or maybe seven. Yeah, so it's, it's just so big. Okay, all right. So this is just to give perspective. And ah, oh, look at the dinosaur. It's not that big. <laughs> this is a rocket. This is the whale. You need you need three more whales to 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 be as tall as this. All right. So plant kingdom is so so massive. Okay, okay. And that's another one. You, you think this is all the story to this uh, division? There's another. The oldest living, the oldest living organism on this planet belong to this division as well. Look at this, bristle combine. Can, can you see on, the, on your note? Maybe you cannot see here. How many years it says? You, um, you can refer to the... I have I put this in the folder so you can download the notes on your own, okay? Not only that, it has the tallest and biggest structure of all the living creature. It is one of the oldest as well. Look, 5,000 years old, 3,000 years old. This thing was already a baby plant when Pharaoh was building the pyramids. Yes? Uh, 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 like, remember that zero? BC what? Before class. <laughs> 5,000 years old. They just don't want to die. So this, in, in science, we call this as immortal beings. They will only die if you kill it or you purposely inject with uh, disease or you burn it. But if you leave this organism on their own, they will not die. They have special mechanism to prevent the cell from deteriorating and they can actually repair whatever errors coming towards them. That good. That good. And this is what we are doing uh, in the field of me uh, medicine to understand how the cells of this plant function so that we can use that information to increase, not to increase human lifespan. What is the point of having a long lifespan if you are old, fribal, and bitter? <laughs> we want to increase health span. You are 120 years old, but you, you can go still go play tennis with neighbor. <laughs> right, right, right. Imagine Nicole David. Nicole David, how old now? 40 something, right? Right, right. Imagine uh, Nicole David, 113. New report. <laughs> That's possible. So that can only be achieved not with having a lifespan, but with a health span. And this plant hold the key scientists trying to break now. I don't know. Maybe if you, you further your study, this is something that you want to pursue. You can break the code. The whole humanity is going to thank you very massively. All right. Okay. The ninth division, Nitophyta. Uh, this thing. There's not many plants in this actually. Very few. But I tell you one thing. This plant uh, got three important um, uh, groups. So this, I'll go down a bit. Um, Nitum, Ephedra, and I do not know how to pronounce it. Welshia or something? Um, people use this as tea. Mormon tea. Tea. This plant here, people turn it into tea. Actually, the right word is not tea. I put it actually, uh, go up in that black thing. There is a difference actually between tea and tea sein. Tea comes from the plant tea, Camellia sinensis. It, that is the traditional definition of tea. But when you use other plants to use the same concept of brewing tea, we call it tea sein. Yeah, yeah. You know your pagaga, you boil water, you put your pagaga and then you drink the water. You don't call it pagaga tea, you call it tea sein. That's the correct word to, to, to call it. Okay. And this um, ephedra, one of the um, genus in this the division, it gives you this epinephrine. Epinephrine just makes you uh, become more active. You know that uh, fight or flight response? Yeah, pumping you up. Yeah. So athlete, uh, bring this. All right, okay, go on. And the tenth one, and this is the most of it. 
the rest of the semester, you're going to look at many plants, right? 90% come from this division. Magnolia phyta and gyrosperm flowering plants, okay? So under this, we uh, divide the plants into two uh, groups, the uh, monocots and also the, the eudicots. So I think you have learned from your school time, some plants you have uh, leaf which are having parallel veins, some plants that have the netted veins like this, some plants have the fibrous root, some plants have the tap root. Yeah, those are actually di distinguishing between the monocot plant and also the dicot plant. And all belong to the division of Magnelophyta. Remember, all of them flowering, all of them flowering, all of them have the vascular system. All, 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 all of them have a um, uh, complete organ structure that you usually associate with plant. Stem, root, flowers, leaves, everything. Complete structure. Okay? So this is the <laughs> uh, scientific word for it. Magnolipsida, dicot. Dicot is actually the are the common words that we use in, in, in science, okay, to call it. This is, this is the, the official difficult word. If you want to use it, nobody's going to see that, that you're wrong, okay? So, can you give me one example of dicot plant? What? Dicot plant. Aka, bagi satu. Contoh, pokok tumbuhan dicot. Dicot means one or two? Two. Two. For example, based on that, so on the right, it says you decode just to say that it's true, true decode. How about you? Banyak ada. What plants do you know? Satu pun tak tahu. Tak tahu. You have not seen any dicot plants in your life. That's surprising. Give me one dicot plant. Mango. That's right. Mango. Yeah. Mango. Yeah. What about monocot? Ah, did I give me uh, 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 dicot? Monocot. Banana. Yes. Banana. Boleh. Banana. Uh, usually herbaceous plant, they are monocot. Uh, Padi? Padi monocot. Monocot, mon, uh, orchid, orchid monocot. Okay, yeah. So these are the things that you're going to see. Don't worry, we're going to this section throughout the semester. Okay, this is just to give you exposure to it. Okay, go on, go on. All right, this is the final part of the lecture today. Um, how do you give the nomenclature and what actually it means? Okay. So this is the complete lineage that you saw earlier today. The Zimes all the way to the kingdom. What's the kingdom? The domain? Eukaryotic. Eukarya. Okay. Start with the kingdom all the way to the species. Okay. For this purpose, we're going to start from this class. Describing this plant here. What plant is this? No, they couldn't call it. You call some flower. They call it black eye Susan. Su Susan, Su Susan like to argue so much. That's why her eyes are black now. Yeah, yeah. Susan used to be pretty, but but yeah, she forgot eating silicon alone is not enough. <laughs> yeah, beauty needs to come with attitude. Okay, the right attitude. So, poor Susan. So let's let's see what what happened to Susan. Okay, go on. So class, class. Uh, there are two dicot and monocot. For the uh, Susan, is it dicot or monocot? Go up, go up, go up. Dicot, Magnolia sida. If monocot, it's called. Liliopsida. Okay, then go on. Then we have the subclass. Not all, but some. If you want to um, to describe the species further, 
and you know you it's talking about the subclass if the ending is id id um go up let's see asterid day aster means flower not e s a s f aster like the asterisk on your keyboard star your keyboard you know the keyboard got star uh, it, the same word <laughs> asterisk it means star okay star. yeah so good good up and then you have after that is the order not necessarily use but if you have the words ending with alis you know that it is order and the order is asteralis same both are aster but the ending you know, it is talking about the subclass order and so on. And look at the family. Is the Ase, Aster Ase, the Aster family. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, this is the largest uh, pl flowering plant family. The um, sunflower family, the Aster family. Okay. All right. So, usually for formal purpose, this is the up to this level people use to describe plants. Usually people don't go beyond that, above that. Family, what family? The bean family, the grass family. What family are there? Rambutan family, Champada family. And they have their own name, okay? Rambutan family. Sapindase. Sapindase. It's the same family as the lychee. It's the same as, do you know Can Canada flag? There is a leaf on the Canada flag. So, yeah, maple. Maple is the same family as rambutan. Sapindase. So, try to try look it up. Um, Esa rubrum. Esa rubrum. Look up the um, the family. Is it this one? If it is one, then it's the same as Kudalain. Because this thing can change. That's why I, I asked you to look it up. Is it the same? Okay, it's still there. So 20 years ago, it's still the same. The reason, the reason it can change because scientists do the DNA sequencing to classify the family now. It's in, the, in the past, scientists use visual to classify based on flowers. These flowers look alike, they belong to the same family. With the advent of DNA technology, they use the DNA to classify the plants now, which is more accurate, okay? But less intuitive, all right? Okay, then you have your subfamily, not necessarily, but this can happen, and the ending is oidea. Oidea, all right? Then the tribe, I almost tak guna. Almost not in use, um, but the tribe is actually more into um, insects. If you deal with insects, okay. Subtribe and then go go down, and then finally the genus and species, okay. So for example, like we we call the papaver, we know it's a poppy. You you know, um, in our in Malaysia, if you go to the bakery, if you buy the bun, usually people sprinkle what on the bun. In here, the burger bun. What people spend called what? Ses yeah, sesame, right? Sesame is in in our region. If you go to to other countries, uh, temperate country, four season countries, they don't use sesame. They use the poppy seeds. Oh. However, however, poppy is actually a, an opium. You know opium? Opium. Sandu. 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 Yeah, ganja, you know. <laughs> so, you cannot consume this more than five gram a day. Otherwise, you'll you you'll see a lot of things. <laughs> okay. So the the buns the the buns. If you go to other countries, like maybe suddenly you go to Russia, you don't find sesame sprinkle on the buns. They use these poppy seeds. 
Okay, it's the culture thing. Okay, yeah. So Papaver is the genus of the poppy. Yeah, poppy. This is where you get opium. So poppy, the flower is very beautiful actually. When the flower is done, you're going to get the the capsule, the structure like this. So this structure, when you cut it, it will ooze out the resin. This resin, you dry, you get your opium. Okay. All right. Okay. And then finally, species. Species. Okay. This is very specific to the plant. Okay. If let's say happening some kind of uh, hybridization, crossing of um, of the plants, like you 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 have flowers and then you cross it by yourself and then you create a new plant that is called variety. Variety. Okay. So maybe everybody in your village, everybody got um. Only red hibiscus. Suddenly, you got rainbow hibiscus. Wow. You're the only one. Can you create a new name? Oh, I don't want to call hibiscus the genus now. I want I want to call it some something else. No, not allowed. You can have. You still call it hibiscus, but you can change the name after that variety. Hi, hi hibiscus happy happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, rainbows make make people happy, right? Okay. That is all for today. Yay. All right. Okay. Tak sabar. Tak sabar. Okay. I, I, I'll try not to stress you out with this thing a lot. Okay. Okay. My student, they said that they didn't learn this thing in faculty pertanian before. I didn't know why. Hmm. Like, like I said. In my faculty, I have not taught this for over three years. For over three years. They 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 revived me again to teach you. <laughs> because they do not have enough stuff. Okay. So actually, um I because this is not my field. Okay, not my field. So usually when you are in not in the right field, people don't allow you to teach. Because nanti korang tak paham. Then, you you're not going to understand. The class will be super broad. Nobody understand them by. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Before you go, any question, any comment, anything to object, to agree? What, what, what happened to you? Okay. K.O.? K.O. Can, can you follow the class? Yes. Is it boring? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry if it's not optimal, okay, because I'm not a botanist. I wanted to be a botanist, but not a lot by difficulty. Okay, okay, so um, if nothing more, I think that's all for today. So I'll see you again during the practical time, okay? Thank you. Okay.